Hi everyone and welcome to this session of the distilling conference looking at enzymes as processing aids in distilleries. Uh, we're grateful to have uh, Prashant here from Novozyme. So hello to you. Hi. Hi everyone. Yeah. Lovely afternoon here in Denmark. Just delightful. And can you just tell us a little bit about what your um, company does, the sort of things that you sell just before we get into the talk, please? Yeah, of course, I would like to. And thanks a lot, uh, David, for inviting me for this conference. Uh, looking forward. Uh, so as you see from my kind of a brief uh, bio data here or bit brief description, I'm from Novozymes. Novozyme is a industry leader or world leader in enzyme production. Uh, we have around 60% market share globally across uh, various industries. And I will touch upon which industries we supply enzymes in a, um, on myself, I would say I started my career. I'm a microbiologist to begin with. So I, I did my master's, then did my chemical engineering in PhD from IIT Mumbai, and then moved to Denmark, lovely Denmark, I would say, to do my postdoctoral work in molecular biology. And that's how I ended up in Novozyme. So my first job was in production. So I started my career in production, producing enzymes. And then after four or five years, um, our leadership uh, told me that, okay, now you can look at the business side also. So I moved to the business side as a technology specialist. And, um, and then I worked in various industries. Uh, we call grain processing, for example, distilling, biofuel, starch to sweetener. And, um, and then in my recent job now, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an inside manager, inside sales manager for distilling. So yeah, based in Denmark for the last 14 years. So what we can say that survived 14 winters. <laughs> yeah, so that's quite uh, quite important to uh, emphasize here. Excellent. Well, we're really pleased to have you here. Um, it's something that I know is really important, but is occasionally overlooked. So I think this is going to be a, a great talk to give some people a bit more information and some an introduction to this topic. So I will hand over to you. Thank you. So David, when I when you first um, um, asked me to think about the topic, um, I did some brainstorming internally, and we thought that okay, it might be a good idea to talk about enzymes for distillery. But as I, as you know that I'm a production guy, <laughs> so I I thought that okay uh, means what I used to, when when I used to work in production, how was my day, um, and. And then I started linking that to distillery. Of course, I must admit, I never worked in distillery, but I traveled and I met customers many times from distilling. So I have some, um, I can sense that their production is, there are, for example, no one day is same, right? In production, there is always happening and that's pretty exciting. Um, and what we call that um, the bright, uh, bright sun or the sun is not shining all the time. There are some dark clouds every now and then. So I try to illustrate this in this uh, schematic here that there are some dark clouds, like for example, the pump is not working that fine day or, the, or there is some problem with the agitator or the feedstock, for example, some grain is coming, which is of not good quality, for example. And then suddenly you have some contamination in the firm and that makes you to do some CIP and that gives some process wing. And of course there are some other challenges. So the production guys has to deal with all these challenges all the time. And, um, but having said that, they always succeed, right? They, they always have good success. And the reason uh, mainly is attributed to their accumulated experience because we learn from, from the experiences, right? That's how, that's how what, what we all do, like right from the bicycle learning <laughs> for the first time. We fail, then we, we again um, basically um, become expert. Uh, but most of what caught my attention or what I realized that it's not only about production, it's also quality which is taking care of the quality of the spirit, which is also sales guys who are basically looking at the production stock, which has to be gone to the market. It's marketing guys. So all in all, there is an entire machinery behind that distillery. And that's where our small humble distillery is here in the middle. And they all function for only one goal. That is a profitability to keep the plant profitable. Of course, profitable is a very big word and underneath of profitability, there are a lot of small things we need to achieve. 
So for example, the plant should be having smooth process operations. Then um, to get that timely delivery of alcohol, then it should have a full starch conversion, no matter what, what grain is coming in. It should stick to that quality, what everyone is striving for. And it should have consistency in that ethanol yield. And all in all, of course, operational costs should be under control. So when I started thinking about that, then I started, hmm, well, I think novel uh, means enzymes play a role here. And it could be interesting to relate that, that all these operations, what we are just talking in the context of enzymes, before going for uh, uh, actual enzymes, before going into the deep dive into the enzymes, let's uh, try to um, see the typical process of distilling. Um, for example, the grain is here, the grain is getting milled um, and it is uh, the flour is produced and the flour is uh, mixed with water. And then um, jet cooker basically increases the temperature. Of course, not all distilleries will have dis um, jet cooker. Some nano distilleries might have other ways of uh, increasing the temperature. But what I'm trying to say here is a general uh, process setup of the distillery. But in the liquefaction, basically all that grain is converted to dextrins. And in fermentation, what happens that all that dextrin is again converted to glucose, which ultimately yeast utilizes. And it produces lovely ethanol, what we all drink at the end of the day. And the distillation job is basically to separate that ethanol from the yeast and the mash. I also wish to emphasize one thing here that many of our distillers, our friends also use malt as a as an alpha amylase source or as a what we call the diastase enzyme source. And uh, they also add this, uh, many times it is a single pot operation that they add in the same tank, they increase the temperature. And there are some commonalities here with brewing as well as distilling. But the malt also is a primary source of enzyme in many distilleries. But there are some distilleries prefer to use dedicated enzyme. So all in all, as you see, imagine this as a, well oiled machinery that this all these parts are kind of a engine parts of your car and i could say that um, enzyme job is like a lubricant to keep this machinery moving all the time so and i will touch up on those and it's quite interesting that how enzymes play a role here to keep that machinery on and to keep that operation smooth so let's begin um, uh, with the enzyme so what I will do in the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes, I will try to walk you through, first of all, I will try to walk you through what is enzyme. And then I will deep dive into the unit operations and enzymes interplay. And finally, I will have a take home message. And of course, I will, I'm looking forward for a fantastic interactive session afterward from the distillers. So let's begin. So what is enzyme? Um, uh, might have already know enzymes. So enzymes are basically proteins. They are catalysts. As you see from the background here, um, there are many things where enzymes play a role. For example, right from the dishwashing, the, the dishwashing powder, what you are using or, or your everyday laundry, you see those black or blue or reddish granules, those are basically enzymes. Or even in the juice, in milk, in beer, and now in distilling. So, Enzymes are almost everywhere. Yeah, and I, I must say about baking. The bread, the, you get those fantastic bread. It is, uh, it is from enzymes. So enzymes are everywhere. They are proteins and they are kind of act as a catalyst. So basically they, they uh, basically make this reaction more energy efficient as well as more accelerated. And that's, that's where the enzymes play a role. And enzymes are not living organism. They are like proteins. So compared to chemical catalysts that they are biodegradable. And each enzyme has very, very specific function. And that's the most interesting part about enzyme that each enzyme is very, very specific. And that is quite important because imagine in distillery, if you have an enzyme which has multiple function, then you will not able to use that enzyme in a most optimal way because someday you will get A reaction and someday you will get B reaction. And that's the beauty about this enzyme that they are very specific. So um, let's, uh, let's jump into the, our first topic that it's all started with grain, right? Um, for example, the grains comes in various um, 
composition and what i what is mean by that is uh, here are the typical grains like for example uh, many are using barley as i told you before that malt is also a good source of enzyme and barley as a, as for organoleptic properties as well as for a source of enzyme then many distillers use corn also especially for whiskey or bourbon whiskey corn uh, basically adds that flavor and it's of course it's uh, uh, it's originated in tennessee a lot of corn around so corn is also one of the main uh, important ingredient then of course in europe especially uh, central western europe is rye triticale and wheat so there are various uh, grains available for distillers to work around and uh, as you notice the starch content of this uh, vary and why i am showing you this starch content is uh, is because depending on that starch content you will get how much that determines how much alcohol it will produce per ton for example if you are using purely one ton of corn it will make more alcohol because it has more starch as such per ton for example barley or any other small um, uh, uh, kind of uh, small crops or then um, basically it has lower starch and it will produce less alcohol compared so it is very important to understand when we are talking about yield is starch determines the yield or how much ethanol that particular batch will produce now if you are using mixed grain then of course you have to think about how much uh, ethanol you will make and that's why i put some typical yield numbers here that corn uh, one ton or 100 kilo of corn typically makes around 40 liter of ethanol whether as um, whether as others are around 35 It, and all those grains also has proteins a lot of proteins especially wheat and uh, all small grains what we call wheat and triticale has lot of proteins including rye and that is um, often is a interesting part if you are looking for the ddgs or the animal feed component so i tried to i thought that let's begin with the grain because it's all start with the grain and then slowly go into the enzyme specific part so once the grain is getting milled you might have um, gray, uh, you might have roller mill or you might have uh, your different kind of mills um depending on that uh, you get uh, some kind you either get grits or you get a fine flour typically uh, fine flour is always uh, ideal for this kind of operation because grits means you might lose some starch from the grits so when the flour is getting mixed with water um it usually it happens in this slurry or mixing tank what we call it. um and this uh, the main function of this slurry tank is basically mix water with the flour and the temperature might be around 45 to 50 degree depending on the plant but typically it's around 50 degree it might have some viscosity issues here and that's why i tried to put distillery challenges and the role of enzyme as a as a title here that each unit operation has some challenges but if you are aware about it then you know how to overcome that challenges proactively so for example if you are today for example if you are using triticale or rye rye is very sticky then it will generate some viscosity in this tank if you are using corn the viscosity will not be that much so and of course as, as distiller depending on what kind of brew you are making you change the grain composition all the time right so it is always better to know that um, what kind of conditions are there and what kind of enzymes we can use so in the slurry tank one of the biggest challenge uh, one can face is the viscosity barrier what we call it. and that viscosity barrier is particularly um, happens when you are using small grains like rye triticale or wheat what it has is uh, what we call the non starch polysaccharide so all these grains has this um, non starch polysaccharides for example beta glucan or xylans those kind of thing from their um, outer pericarp and because of that what happened the viscosity increases quite uh, significantly as as illustrated in this video where um, basically if you put magnet in the beaker uh, i will repeat this video again uh, then what happens that uh, the the beaker or the measuring cylinder 
complexity reducing enzymes are added you the the magnet falls off quite fast compared to the left one where you are not adding any enzymes so what it shows that there is a resistance to the magnet because of that viscosity it's a very quick and uh, simple way i thought to share some kind of schematic just to illustrate and this viscosity reducing enzymes is basically cocktail of enzymes it has beta beta gluconate xylanase and cellulose and their main function is again to hydrolyze those um, basically non starch polysaccharides and thereby reducing the viscosity so that the mash will move smoothly to the next unit operation remember each unit operation has some job to do that and the slurry tank or job is to basically mix the flour quite well keep that viscosity under control and pass the their product to the next operation which is basically liquefaction just imagine that slurry is coming in and steam is coming in so they are mixing together and that zone is very shear there is lot of shear in that zone but that actually fantastic because the slurry what is happening here that slurry is basically getting uh, contacted from the steam and that gives lot of explosion like shear inside that tube and the jet cooker do that job very well and i will explain to i will explain little bit more what exactly happened there again in terms of schematic which i really like every time i do that um so in the uh, this step is called as liquefaction and in what happen in liquefaction is imagine a starch molecule as a woolen ball um it's a complex molecule that starch it was hidden or starch was there in the in for example if you have a wheat you mill that wheat you the water is getting mixed it's now exposed to the water and it is in the water now and uh, imagine this starch as a woolen ball and uh, upon contacting with water shear and heat what happened that this starch become bulgy it become big now just to give you analogy that i must i i'm sure you all guys are making popcorn at home what happened that you take corn or any grain and you put it in microwave switch on the microwave and boom you get those popcorns nice big popcorns right exactly this same thing is happening. I mean, what happens in popcorn product uh, process is basically that starch is getting exploded into the big one, like it is becoming big, because it has some moisture. That uh, popcorn or that grain has some moisture, which and with the heat, it pops up. And exactly this is happening here. That this starch is becoming bulgy, and uh, as it become bulgy, viscosity increases substantially, which actually shown in the video on the right hand side. So while the video is uh, running. so as you notice here this is a uh, this is a pure starch white color and this is wheat and one of my hot water into it and um, as you see now what is happening and i will try to explain it later using that schematic what is on the left side but watch that video carefully so he is mixing in, uh, just notice the viscosity it drops like this and that's where the alpha amylase play role that that is because of that alpha amylase that's why the viscosity is dropping substantially and immediately i think those two things are quite important here because yeah look at here like initially it was like a really cake and now it turn like turn like almost into the water so that's what alpha amylase is doing in liquefaction and if you are using malt enzyme malt enzyme also do same same job basically so because malt enzyme and alpha amylases are not different um so and what is happening then um, if you are little bit nerdy then if you look on the left side what is happening in like a caesar so it is cutting that this ball of of wool ball or the starch molecule into the small pieces of dextrin and that is exactly hap what happening here that um, this uh, sorry uh, this uh, viscosity is dropping substantially so this is where exactly the viscosity drop so this process uh, what uh, is called as this is a solubilization step where starch basically absorb all the water and become solubilized and then alpha amylase basically act on it and cut it and form small dextrins and this is called dextrinization so it 
if someone is telling you that hey um, how is your liquefact then basically you have to basically what they are asking you is how good is your dextrinization and we have some analytical methods also to measure how good is your dextrinization so you can basically connect with us if you want to know more but i would like to give uh, two interesting examples here and that's where the enzyme uh, power comes into play uh, what happened that uh, one fine day my customer called me and said that hey prashant um i have terrible problems my slurry is extremely thick i'm your enzymes are not working so i said okay what what happening with my enzymes means the enzymes are pretty stable so uh, what could be the reason so uh, what we did we did together that uh, thanks to whatsapp like technologies we basically had a complete um, kind of rundown on the process and what we realize is um, uh, is the on that particular week they got bad corn bad corn in the sense um, the the corn is difficult to liquefy so it it um, it so the starch uh, the enzymes are not getting access to that starch molecule because of the way the corn is or corn or grain is dried what happened that once we realized this that there is a, some difficult grain which is uh, difficult to liquefy um, what i did that actually i shipped uh, another enzyme and i told uh, my customer to increase the temperature to 95 that means you will force that starch to get in into the liquid the normal enzymes can't work at 95 degree um basically the enzyme uh, the, the, if you are using uh, around 85 is the optimal temperature of the of typical alpha amyloses but we do have some special enzymes which work at even 95 even 98 uh, so we i shipped that enzyme and the process runs smoothly afterward the another example i wish to point out here is that uh, similar incidences happen and as i told you before we learn from all those experiences right so in uh, what happened other day that uh, one of my customer had uh, some problems that their grain uh, because of some reason the ph went down to 4.5 in the liquefaction stage now most of the enzymes work quite well alpha amylases work quite well at around 5.2 to 5.5 but when the ph start going down of course they work goes down substantially and because of that reason what happened that this guy this uh, basically this had it turned out to be a thick juice uh, or the thick thick syrup and uh, or thick mash that is the right word um, and of course if you have a thick mash then your production you will not able to push that slurry or even if you able to push that slurry when it will hit the distillation column it will char the distillation column because there is lot of unutilized starch getting hit on that distillation column uh, making that distillation column foul so you have to use hydroblasting again your entire operation is kind of disrupted and there are lot of tension around right from the boss to production floor so um uh, so he called me and then again we did this root cause analysis that's what i typically do with my customer and uh, we figured that out that it is a ph which my, which might be the main reason so i shipped another enzyme which works quite well at 4.5 ph 4.5 to 4.7 typically we don't uh, typically when the distillers come to us we ask them okay tell us your process conditions and accordingly we will give you the enzyme it's like going to the doctor or practitioner and then discovering what what is happening here uh, so then i ship this uh, enzyme and then uh, we got some praises but it uh, what what i'm trying to uh, emphasize here is you can't control many things in the plant many uh, but what we can do with the collaboration is we could try we can overcome some of those inefficiencies like for example i wish to give one more example there uh, is about the jet cooker i mentioned or the heating if the heating is not proper what happened that the starch is not getting gelatinized properly so th- there are some still some starch left which goes again to the fermentation as it goes to the fermentation it's gone you, the yeast can't you convert that starch to glucose and neither the glucoamylases so and then it hit the distillation column again making that column char but the beauty about the enzymes that if you know that this is what happening if you have some hardware limitation 
then we can add some activities into the enzyme thereby overcome some of the inefficiency and that's the beauty and that's where uh, collaboration comes into picture that enzyme expert or technology specialist like me and you guys so if you have a good interaction i think we could able to make the difference i'm i'm sure i have tons of examples but as because of the constraint i i thought to share at least those two two examples to give the flavor so once the liquefaction is done what um, what happens that these dextrins or those short chains are basically the entire slurry move to the next step which is fermentation and the fermentation is the is the thing right because all the things what we are doing at the from the beginning is to make that glucose available for our humble yeast so that it will make that alcohol um repeatedly and reproducible so in fermentation um depending on the distillers many distilleries work at around 24 degree also some are running at 32 degree uh, typically the e 32 degree that's its optimal temperature and the ph of around 4.8 but 24 degree is also not bad because that keeps that unwanted um, kind of uh, alcohols under control uh, because that's also quality is also important for our guys our distillers friend right so here um, what happens in the fermentation is uh, basically those dextrins those dextrins comes into two forms imagine that uh, this is alpha 14 linkage and then you have alpha 16 linkage so i i'm going little bit nerdy i know but i think this is important to tell uh, to or to 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 mention so imagine that there is alpha 14 linkage so all these are glucose molecules linked with alpha 14 linkage so whenever it is like this it is alpha 14 and whenever it is like this it is alpha 16 but all in all these are all glucose molecules and the main function of glucoamylase is convert all those linkages break down convert it to glucose now glucoamylase is not like alpha amylase glucoamylase only work from this ends it can't uh, cleave the link from middle it, very important to know and why i am telling you because imagine now glucoamylase start cutting here when it hit alpha 16 linkage it stuck because glucoamylase is not good at cutting this bond alpha 16 bond it is very good in cutting these bonds and that's why uh, that's why um, if you are using normal uh, maltogenic enzymes or uh, malt then uh, some of those properties might um, might be missed so what is uh, what we do to in order to overcome this is we add some other enzymes called pululanase and pululanase job mainly is to cut this alpha 16 linkage and to make make the clean um kind of uh, linkage available for glucoamylase then it it uh, basically then it makes that glucose um once that is done basically that glucose is taken up by yeast and it uh, produce co2 it produce some heat and also it produce ethanol so that's that's a very you can say that's a simple process but main job is to get that glucose all the time to the yeast remember too much glucose is also not good and too low glucose is also not good it should be just enough because too much glucose will make yeast tizzy and it will make uh, unwanted stuff what we call um, glycerol we don't want that glycerol we want that entire sugar to channel to the ethanol path and that's why we uh, when we uh, basically sample the enzymes we basically uh, recommend the dose depending on the process condition so we study the process condition so we had a quick uh, chat with our customers and then we recommend the dosage to make sure that you are getting just enough the yeast is getting just enough glucose so that it will make that ethanol continuously if it is too low glucose become sick and if it is too much again it will produce glycerol because it's a fastidious organism so it's very important to have that control well controlled glucose glucoamylase addition but imagine now that if you are using corn and corn is quite interesting because corn has lot of fiber and lot of starch is getting trapped into that fiber part and just to illustrate it that imagine that this is a uh, fiber those blue lines are fiber and uh, this uh, basically red uh, the pink dots are basically the bound starch yeah there are them some cartoon i just thought to my my daughter like that a lot by the way <laughs> so 
basically there is some bound starch and what is mean by this bound starch that imagine that this is a this is a fiber uh, this is a mass though but this is a fiber yeah, and when you milled it you still have some fibers coming in into the mash and the starch is hidden behind those and those are not accessible to the liquefaction to the fermentation stage so what we uh, what we recommend for this kind of process is the enzymes or glucoamylase containing cellulose so what cellulose does is basically imagine this as a cellulose they basically puncture this this um, uh, fiber molecule here and once it puncture basically it it produce more starch into the fermentation now maybe you might think that i am talking something stupid here because previously i told whenever there is this unescaped starch is going to the fermentation it's gone in that what i thought what uh, what uh, the underlying assumption was we are using normal glucoamylase this is a special glucoamylase so this, this is this contains cellulase and this also contains some enzymes which can convert this starch at 32 degree into glucose so it's a complex cocktail of enzymes so if you are using corn and then you need this kind of enzyme the another important uh, part this cellulase play is basically as they are as the fibers are punctured it doesn't hold that much of water now so imagine now this slurry is hitting the distillation tank and in distillation tank what happened that water uh, the ethanol is getting evaporated and the water is falling down together with the mash but if your if your fiber is now punctured it doesn't hold that much of water so you you can see a big improvement in the energy on your distillation tank or if you have a dryer for your ddgs or what we call animal feed then in dryer the main job of dryer is to evaporate water now if you have uh, already a punctured fiber water evaporates significantly in um, faster than normal from the day one the effect on energy so that makes the enzymes quite interesting that you are adding in one unit operation but it can influence the other unit operation positively but you need to know about its capability then that's why we are talking today right to just give you that flavor that what the enzymes really do in other unit operations also now uh, so what i what i mentioned until now is the glucoamylase containing cellulase as well as containing some special enzymes which convert that starch and converting that to glucose and glucose eat eaten up by the um, uh, yeast and then yeast make ethanol now apart from that there is one more enzymes which play quite interesting role and especially if you uh, if you are press on time like uh, if you want to make if you wish to finish your process in 48 hours for example uh, with the high dry matter of course like 32% dry solids or 33% dry solids uh, or if you wish to reduce your inorganic nitrogen then protease can boost the fermentation so what that's what we call that they, those are boosters like they boost the fermentation and how they boost this fermentation so any distillers you guys um, as i mentioned to you in the beginning that all these grains brings lot of protein okay. and these are the protein just imagine these are the protein so all these grains has those proteins but yeast can't eat that protein because yeast don't have simply that machinery and many so what we do we also add some inorganic nitrogen like i am now i am telling you about the biofuel part in biofuel what happens that many times we add ammonium sulfate or urea but in distillery uh, usually urea some other um, side products which are unwanted even ammonium sulfate also is not recommended instead of that many distillery prefer to use diammonium phosphate or dap um so you can add dap but you have all the proteins here available for the yeast the uh, what what yeast want basically is just to some something which can convert this complex protein to small peptides and amino acids once you have that yeast could able to eat it easily and the great part about that is yeast don't have to invest energy because if yeast is eating that inorganic nitrogen like diammonium phosphate it has to put energy to convert that nitrogen into amino acids now here you are getting it's like a lego bricks you are getting this ready made so each job is just to eat it and then replace it with the or to use it in biomass or to make that ethanol pathways so what then is does 
uh, he saved that much of energy here. Basically, he direct that energy towards ethanol production. So your ethanol production rate accelerates quite uh, quite significantly, and that's why we call this as a ethanol booster. Because if yeast is happy, it will reproduce, and in the reproduction, you get a lot of ethanol. Uh, and the protease job is basically to make that yeast happy and to boost the ethanol. But it comes with caveat. Too much is also not good. I can remember too much and too less. We, we want just enough. Too much protein uh, or too much amino acids also is not good because it will produce fusel alcohol, like fusels, which you guys hate. Means distillery don't want that fusels uh, because if they give, it gives terrible headache. So that's why many people are uh, kind of having some kind of uh, reservation on using proteases. Because if you if you don't add the right dose, it will and it will make those higher alcohols, which are bad in the taste and sense, organoleptic properties. And that's why again collaboration is more important. That if we collaborate, basically we can fine tune the dose, and then uh, we actually also have analytical capabilities to check whether you have fusel oil produced or not, and then we fine tune the dose. So all in all, what I'm trying to say that. Um, Enzymes play quite a uh, different role. They are very specific. But what is most important here is not only enzymes, it's you and me and collaboration and hardware. All the things come together to get that profitability target, to hit that bullseye on the profitability and to have that smooth process operation. So um, all in all, I think uh, this is my take home message to you guys that enzymes are proteins. Enzymes can take care of some of the process inefficiencies, as I mentioned to you before, that be it a jet cooker or the grain quality or the related CIP related process swings. Um, but we are here to support you. So always collaborate. Feel free to connect with us and we, can, we will try to find out. We are not, I am not saying that I'm an expert in everything. It's a collaboration. And we learn from the experience, right? And the key task of enzyme is same, that to keep that machinery on and on all the time without wear and tear. So it's like a lubricant. And process variations can happen. And, um, but the associated actions and agility is important. And there, I think this, again, I'm repeating myself that there the collaboration comes into picture. So what I'm trying to say is that feel free to connect with me. Uh, I have my email ID here. And I'm more than happy to interact with you later also during the Crafty, a fantastic platform, the virtual platform what David and guys uh, made. And uh, we also recently launched just before Easter a website, Distilling with Biology, specific distilling. So I, I highly recommend you guys to visit that website and just connect with me and uh, other experts. So I'm not the only one. We have around five to six experts here. So if I could not able to solve the problem, we have some brainstorming and then we will get back to you. But having said that, have a fantastic rest of the day and looking forward to interact with you. Thanks a lot, David, and you guys for your uh, attendance. Well, thank you so much. That was a great overview. Um, I've certainly learned a few things in that as well and entertaining yeah. as well, which is always important, isn't it? Um, but I think it's given a lovely overview. We will be doing a live Q and A. Um, so think about your questions get those in uh, and you'll be able to type in them as we uh, as we have our discussion. But until then, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you Prashant for giving us all your time and we'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you, cheers. Yeah, it's the water, but yeah, it's cheers. <laughs> <laughs>